by the 1890s, probably the world's leading power in chemistry and in, in chemical industry was Germany. Uh, the Germans were producing the bulk of the world's dyes. Uh, they were the leading producer of pharmaceuticals. Uh, the German chemical industry was probably the leading one in the world. Uh, the British and the United States chemical industries were a, sort of a reasonable second and third. To some extent, the German, American, and British traditions of chemical manufacturing were different in the late 19th century, and that influences why chemical engineering as a profession emerges earliest in the United States, emerges much later, especially in Germany, where it's almost a post-World War II phenomenon. Uh, the, the key reason for this is the nature of the chemical industries in the, the countries. In Germany, the emphasis was on scope, on producing a wide variety of high value chemicals in low volumes where they could be produced in batches. Uh, the chemical reactions were fairly complex, but the machinery to produce the small batches uh, weren't that complex. And, that, and they, they produced lots of different dyes, thousands of different colors, uh, lots of pharmaceuticals, but in small batches, uh, sort of high cost chemicals, high quality, low quantity. And that type of chemical industry was dominated by the research chemist working in the laboratory to produce a new shade of mauve or a new shade of red or a slightly different pharmaceutical uh, to deal with headaches. When it came time to move from the laboratory to the industrial scale, when you're dealing with batch production, uh, essentially the Germans relied on a team approach where sort of headed by the research chemist who would bring in a mechanical engineer and perhaps a civil engineer to jointly design a plant to produce this new type of dye. The emphasis on smallness and quantities and the complexity of the reaction instead of the complexity of the machinery meant the chemist dominated the chemical industry, the research chemist. The American chemical industry, on the other hand, had grown up emphasizing scale. Bulk production of a few basic, low-cost, high-volume chemicals, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, uh, superphosphate fertilizers, and things like that. Now, if you're emphasizing trying to bring the cost down for these huge volumes, needed of sulfuric acid and superphosphate fertilizers. That means you need large-scale machinery. And the American emphasis on, on scale rather than scope meant the American chemical industry was tilted towards the engineer rather than the chemist. And it was one of the reasons why the American industry was sort of ripe for the emergence of a chemical engineer in a way that the, the German industry wasn't. Uh, the British industry was sort of between the two. They were more like the American industry in emphasizing scale over scope, but the British had a tradition of sort of craft training their chemists rather than academically training their chemists. Uh, toward the turn of the century, where virtually every chemist that had the title in America had an academic degree of some sort. In England, it was about 40%. And a lot of English chemists tended to be in the strict industrial chemistry tradition. They had sugar chemists, they had glass chemists, they had dye chemists. Many of these had worked their way up from office boy to analytical chemists that handled uh, quality control tests on the paper that they were turning out or the glass that they were turning out without ever getting a, a college degree. And it meant that uh, the British, when they began to recognize uh, that there were certain 
things that what little would term unit operations that could be rearranged that went across all of these that were common, the British were unable to immediately make the transition from this sort of vertical look at a single industry to a horizontal look at what was common across the lines. So when um, uh, Davis, who played around with the, at least implicitly with the idea that that uh, Little would call unit operations, attempted to organize a Institute of Chemical Engineers in Britain in the 1880s, 1890s. Uh, he failed. He, he couldn't get it off the ground, and partially it was because of the strong industrial chemistry tradition within uh, the British industry and the fact that most British chemists were self-trained rather than academically trained.